The pioneers used to ride these babies for miles, but now they just lie in wait to be plundered by us. Boulders of all types are the lifeblood of Don't Starve Together. However, full disclosure, a video on them may not be the most exciting thing in the world for some of you folks. But I will tell you where to find them, what type each will give you, and perhaps briefly mention what we can do with the crap we will get. Sound good? Sounds good. But annoyingly, let's quickly first review the tools of the trade. Mining most boulders will deplete a normal pickaxe by 18% every time. The opulent pickaxe by the mere 4.5% and the pick axe by 4%. And that last one may sound enticing, but trust me, the ancient pick axe is a complete waste of time and resources. So if you got the gold, just stick to opulent tools for the time being, as you'll get more bang for your buck, as they say. Boulder time, though, and here we'll talk smooth variants. Smooth boulders will always drop three rocks, one flint, and one niter, no matter what. However, we do have a 60% chance to receive receive an additional flint and a 25% chance at another piece of niter. So not bad for such a common rock. And smooth boulders litter the rocky land biomes for certain. However, a small number two can be found guarded by hounds in the dragonfly desert if you wish. They are actually pretty darn plentiful in the mosaic, so make note there. And a select few can be found roaming the savannas or forests as well. So if you're looking for some quick mineral pick-me-ups, smooth boulders are just about anywhere you look. But why exactly are we after such minerals? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps because rocks go into things like our fire pits, science machines, farms, tools, thermal stones, select armors and machineries even, walls, cut stone needed for even better crabs, etc. Listen, you're gonna need rocks to survive in this game. And I mean like quite a lot of rocks, so get mining. Though to even begin mining, you will need flint. But thankfully, flint comes from mining, so it all works out in the end. It's very simple, folks. Flint equals tools, and tools equal more resources, including flint. And the stuff goes into select weapons, crafts to craft, well, better crafts, and plenty, plenty more. Flint is an essential mineral at all levels for all players, beginner or not. So go get you some. And lastly, niter should be sought after for its link to summer survival, as the stuff goes into both endothermic fire variants. But not only that, we can craft unique weapons and machinery with the stuff, amass lethal gunpowder for potential explosions. It'll help us keep our beef tame, and it can even heal our lost health to boot, and might even be used as fuel in certain areas. The point is, any boulder is going to help in the long run and every resource has a use. Cause I simply cannot tell you how many people actually tell me that they ignore all the other boulders and simply go for gold vein variants alone. And while the exchange for gold overnighter is obviously enticing, they are not the be all end all. When mined, however, you will get three rocks, one flint, and one gold at the very least. But do enjoy the 60% chance at an additional flint and a 25% chance at double the gold, which is absolutely marvelous. Finding these veins early is pretty the darn essential actually, even given what I just said. But one thing that always gets people is their spawning habits. Folk obviously look to the Rocky Lands biome as their saving grace. However, it is still quite common for gold veins to appear in forests too, actually. So early game gold is not as difficult to obtain as many think it is. You just have to know where to look and maybe look in a different place than usual. And some additional places could be the Dragonfly Deserts, although watch out for hounds again, or perhaps the hodgepodge of the mosaic, because there's plenty there too. So options galore, and that is not even counting the chance for veins to just pop up at random. And as for why we seek the Yellowstones, it would be easier to tell you what gold doesn't go into or even lead to, if I'm honest. Opulent tools, better science machinery, essential base structures, beefalo taming mechanics, magical crafts, dress items, and again, it is a stepping stone for bigger and better things. Gold is good, who could have guessed that one? Know what else is good, but doesn't actually get enough credit? The flintless boulder. And as advertised, the boulder variant supplies no flint, and instead chooses to drop four total rocks guaranteed with a 60% chance to get a fifth. 
and this is amazing considering how plentiful they are. And as said prior, rocks are a resource that you'll go through quickly even without realizing it sometimes. So again, these boulders are amazing for replenishing our potential stony shortages. These flintless stones will mostly be found near the dangers of the Dragonfly Desert, however, so it is up to you to weigh the risk over reward. Ah yes, the meteor boulders. And so you know, meteor showers and don't stop together are not only completely random, they actually move over time and can even drop normal smooth boulders to boot. However, do note, if you are looking for meteor fields, chances are that the mosaic biome and or rocky land biome are your best bet for them. They won't, unfortunately, guarantee an intact meteor as well, but when mined, meteors grant one rock, a single flint, and two moon rocks each time, with a 60% chance to get one more moon rock, and a 30% chance to get two additional pieces of the celestial stones. Absolutely wonderful. Moon rock goes into a limited set of things in this game. However, they are quite unique. We can alter the floored postern and make the celestial portal in order to change characters at will. We can fix the actual moonstone itself in hopes of participating in the moonstone event eventually. We can create celestial turf to aid some otherworldly plants in their growth, and so much more. Moon rock is hard to come by via meteors alone, so it's why the actual moonstone event as mentioned is important in the minerals renewability, so make note there. However, let us not forget the rarest of boulders, the suspicious round meteor. And it is so rare, because not only are meteor showers themselves random, as we said, the actual boulders that crash into the constant are not guaranteed to remain intact regardless. So it's entirely possible to never once even see one of these things. But when mined, expect similar resources as normal meteors, only this one-of-a-kind boulder drops the one and only celestial orb. And while on the ground, and in close proximity to the player, the orb opens up the celestial tab for us and yes while it shares the same name as the tab accessed on a lunar island they are two separate things with very dissimilar crafts as this one is all about that celestial portal we mentioned earlier but to wrap up i say we venture down under to the stalagmite biomes to discuss some additional boulders of the world and yes there are two different stalagmite biomes for two different stalagmites down here and the first we'll be discussing are considered the normal variants found primarily in this biome right here. We will see three rocks, a flint, and a gold nugget with each smash boulder, with chances for additional drops. However, full stalagmites have a 5% chance to drop either a blue or red gem to boot, and a 10% chance to drop a fossil. In fact, every stalagmite, no matter its stage, has this same chance at history. Very nice. We'll end the day showcasing the power of said fossils. So for now, know that tall stalagmites are typically found in and around battlisks in their own stalagmite biomes per se. Tall stalagmites also have stages to them that will ultimately determine their loot tables. But know that only full tall stalagmites can drop gems or even logs with a 5% chance of doing so. And also note that these gems will only be red gems this time around. And speaking of the gems, they go into and lead to roughly 80 million things, and that is only just counting the red and blue gems for Pete's sake. So do yourself a favor, as everything's just going to be bogged down in this video alone, watch one exclusively on these gem suckers. Two honorable mentions here though, Spalagmites are somewhat boulders that also house cave spider variants to boot. So kill the spiders, mine their homes, and enjoy rocks, silk, spider glands, and even an increased chance at fossils. And yes, plural, up to 15% instead of the usual 10 to be exact. And finally, technically glaciers are boulders. And in Solo Don't Starve, they will actually give rocks as well as ice. But in Don't Starve Together, the latter is the only prize. Ice, though, is a phenomenal filler, used in number of crafts, actually, and can be saved forever if kept cold. So good stuff.
But there you have it, everyone. Now, likely a drag through boulders and minerals in Don't Starve Together. But as for fossils, however, know that they are some of the best quote-unquote walls in the game, that they will be needed for the ancient fuel weaver eventually, and perhaps can even be decorations for our bases if you happen to combine eight of them. Beautiful. And thanks for watching, folks. This one was certainly for beginners. However, I also didn't treat you guys all like idiots either, as discovering or already knowing what these minerals do for you is on you, not some random YouTuber. So get to mining, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.